Today I'm going to show you how to knit a geometric style handbag using a circular knitting machine. This pattern is inspired by a traditional granny square bag technique that's often used for crochet bags. I wanted to find a way to adapt the technique for knitting machines using a bright modern look. I'm going to show you every step of the process in this video, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase the printable pattern in my shop linked below. The PDF includes both detailed instructions on how to knit the bag, as well as a blank template that you can use to sketch out and plan for your own bag designs. You can print your template to sketch by hand, or you can bring it into a paint program to design your bag digitally. The bags measure approximately 9 inches wide by 13 inches high, including the handle. The bottom area of the bag measures about six and a half inches high. It's the perfect size to fit a wallet, phone, and keys. I'm also working on a large size of this pattern, so stay tuned for that video. If you make this project, please tag me on social media when you share your work, at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. In terms of timing, it took me about 45 minutes to knit the pieces, 20 minutes to seam the ends, 45 minutes to seam the bag together, and about 25 minutes to knit and attach the I-cord handles for a total project time of approximately 2 hours and 15 minutes from beginning to end. That being said, we all go at different paces, so project time will vary from person to person. There are so many ways to customize these bags. You can play with different color patterns, you can crochet, hand knit, or braid the handle instead of the I-cord. You could knit the bag all in one color. You could change the length of the handle and make it a shoulder or crossbody bag. You could line the inside of the bag with fabric. You could add an embellishment to the front. You could add a magnetic clasp. You could add a button closure or you could knit a pocket for the inside. For this video, I'm going to show you how to make the multicolor bag, but you can find the details for how to make the checkered bag and the striped bag in the printable pattern linked below. I have lots more fun, quick and easy patterns coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I release my latest videos. And if you'd like to check out all my knitting machine books, templates, and patterns, visit dianalavinenits.com. The techniques I'm going to walk you through today include casting on and off of a knitting machine with scrap yarn, changing colors, seaming the ends, assembling the bag, seaming with the mattress stitch with both vertical and horizontal pieces, and how to knit the I-cord handles using an I-cord machine. All the supplies I'm using today are linked in the description below. For this project, I'm using a 22 needle Addy knitting machine, or you can switch this out for the Centro 22 needle machine. For the handles, I'm using the Tulip I-cord machine, but you can use any I-cord machine, or if you don't have one, you can hand knit, crochet, or braid the handle instead. I'm using loops and threads and peckable yarn in a variety of colors. You'll also need a crochet hook, a darning needle, scissors, stitch markers, and if you'd like to include one, a knitting tag. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to knit up a sample square before beginning the project. This pattern is created using squares, and it's important that your dimensions are accurate. Tension can vary from person to person and yarn to yarn, so it's possible you'll need to knit a row or two more or less than I did if your tension is significantly different than mine. I would suggest following my row count, but if your squares aren't looking even, adapt the pattern so that your panels match the dimensions shown in this video. Step 1 is knitting the pieces. This bag is created using 5 panels. Follow the pattern from the top to the bottom of each panel. We'll begin with the first panel, which will be two squares. Cast on to a 22 needle machine using scrap yarn that you'll be removing at the end of the project. Wrap your yarn around the first needle and then weave the yarn front and back along all the needles until the end of the row. When you reach your first needle again, place your yarn into the tensioner. Hold the yarn to provide tension. Turn the knob to begin knitting. Start slowly for the first couple of rows and then you can begin to pick up speed. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish the five rows, cut the scrap yarn and throw it in the middle of the machine. Switch to your main color, making sure to leave a long tail, which we'll be using to seam the headband later. For this project, I leave about a two foot tail to be on the safe side. For the rest of the pattern, make sure to leave a long tail when both casting on and casting off. Place the yarn tail right next to the scrap yarn tail and hold them close and low as you slowly begin to knit the next row. Set your counter back to zero. For the first square, knit 16 rows in the first square color. Next, we'll switch to the second square's color. For this project, I like to move my yarn color changes off by a few stitches from the cast-on needle. I do this because the yarn change can sometimes create a small bump on the side of the work, and I find that it makes the bag seam look messy if the yarn changes occur at the same place as the cast-on stitches. So for this bag, I cast on the first color before the first needle here. 
but when I changed the colors in the middle of the panels, I purposely knit three additional needles after finishing my row count before switching to the next color, which will move the yarn change bumps to the inside of the bag. When you switch to the next color, cut a tail about five or six inches long and throw it in the middle of the machine after the third needle from the cast on needle. Next, leave another 5 to 6 inch tail in the next square color and hold the two yarn tails together close and low as you slowly begin to knit the next row. After you've knit a few stitches, turn your counter back to zero to begin counting the next square. Knit 16 rows for the second square. After about 5 rows after each yarn color change, tie a quick knot between the two yarn tails from the color change. Don't double knot these yet, just one quick knot to secure the ends is great. We'll come back at the end to secure these knots. When you finish 16 rows, switch back to the scrap yarn. When you switch back to the scrap yarn, you want to go back to doing the switch before the first needle, just like we did when we cast on. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish 5 rows, cut the yarn and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work out of the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. Put the work aside for now while we knit the second panel. For the second panel, we'll be knitting these three squares, beginning with the top square and working our way down to the bottom square. Cast on again to your 22 needle machine using scrap yarn and knit five rows in the scrap yarn. Switch to your first square color, switching before the first needle. Knit 16 rows in the first color. When you finish 16 rows, switch to the second square color, remembering to switch after the third needle. Knit 15 rows in the second square color. When you finish 15 rows in the second square color, switch to the third square color, again switching after the third needle. Knit 16 rows in the third square color. After you finish 16 rows, switch back to the scrap yarn, making the switch before the first needle. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. Cut the yarn and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Gently stretch out the stitches and set aside the work while we knit the third panel. For the third panel, we'll be knitting four squares, starting with this top square and working our way down to this bottom square. This will be the longest panel. Cast back on to the 22 needle machine using scrap yarn and knit five rows in the scrap yarn. Switch to the first square color before the first needle. Knit 16 rows in the first square color. After 16 rows, knit 3 additional stitches and switch to the second square color, changing after the third needle. Knit 15 rows in the second square color. Next, switch to the third square color, again switching after the third needle. Knit 15 rows in the third square color. Next, we'll knit the fourth square. Switch again after the third needle to your fourth square color. Knit 16 rows in the 4th square color. After 16 rows, switch back to the scrap yarn. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. Then cut a short tail and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Gently stretch out the stitches and put the work aside while we knit the 4th panel. Next we'll knit the 4th panel which will be these 3 squares beginning with the top square and working our way down to the bottom square. Cast on to the 22 needle machine using scrap yarn and knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. Switch to the first square color before the first needle. Knit 16 rows in the first square color. After the first square, switch to the second square color, making the switch after the third needle. Knit 15 rows in the second square color. After the second square, switch to the third square color, making the switch again after the third needle. Knit 16 rows in the third square color. After you finish the third square, switch back to the scrap yarn, switching before the first needle. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. Then cut the yarn and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work out of the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. Set the work aside while we knit the last panel. Next we'll knit the last and smallest panel. This panel is just one square. Cast onto the 22 needle machine using scrap yarn and knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. Before the first needle, switch to the square color yarn. Knit 17 rows in the square color. 
After 17 rows, switch back to the scrap yarn. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. Next, cut the scrap yarn and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work out of the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. We're done knitting. We now have five panels. The first panel has two squares, the second panel has three squares, the third panel has four squares, the fourth panel has three squares, and the fifth panel is one square. Step two is seaming the ends. Before we seam, turn each of the first four tubes inside out so that the V-shaped stitches are on the inside and the bumpy stitches are on the outside. You'll see all the yarn tails that are left over from when we switched colors. Secure all the yarn tails with knots except for the yarn tails between the scrap yarn and the cast on and cast off colors. As you're securing them with knots, make sure to pull the tails tight enough that the stitches on the outside are brought together, but not so tight that it bunches up the work. As you're securing the knots, check the outside of the work to see how your tension is looking. Trim the tails as well. Our tails are now secured and trimmed. Next, turn the tubes right side out. You'll notice that all of the tubes have open ends. We'll use a crochet hook to seam the sides of the tubes closed. Bring the sides of the tube together, lining up the stitches on top of each other with the two yarn tails all the way to the left side. Make sure that when you arrange the stitches, there's one stitch all the way to the right that's perpendicular to the rest of the stitches. Bring your crochet hook under that loop all the way to the right and then pull through the stitch that's to its left on the top side. Then pull through the stitch that's to its left on the bottom side. Continue in this pattern, pulling through the next stitch on the top followed by the next stitch on the bottom until the end of the row. When you reach the end of the row, pull the yarn tail through. Next, remove the scrap yarn. For the side that's more challenging to remove, identify the top length of yarn running through the top stitches and remove that length a few stitches at a time. Once that length is removed, the rest of the stitches will pull off much more easily. Next, turn the work around and repeat the same process on the other side of the panel. We just finished seaming the ends of the first panel. Now repeat the same process on both sides of the rest of the panels. Our five panels are now knit and seamed and we're ready to assemble the bag. Step three is assembling the bag. Place your first panel diagonally. Place your second panel below it with the bottom squares aligned together. Place your third panel below that one with the top squares aligned together. Next, place the fourth panel below halfway down from the previous panel. Then place the fifth panel below aligned with the center square above it. Step four is seaming the panels together. Begin with the top two panels. Add a couple of stitch markers to bring the work together while you seam. Thread the yarn tail onto a darning needle. Next, we'll be using the mattress stitch to seam the panels together. When I seam with the mattress stitch, my first step is to identify one line of V-shaped stitches on either side of the pieces I'm seaming, making sure they're both running in the same direction. When I seam, I'll be working through the bars located directly next to those two rows, located here. For this seam, I'll be threading my needle through two interior bars on the top of the side of one panel, shown here. Then I'll pull the yarn through, and I'll thread the needle through two interior bars on the side of the other panel, shown here. Again, I'll thread through two bars on one side, and pull the yarn through. Then I'll thread through two bars on the other side, and pull the yarn through. Continue in this pattern, alternating between two bars on one side, followed by two bars on the other side, until the end of the row. For this seam, I'm threading through two bars at a time, but if you prefer to work one bar at a time for these seams, that works too. As you seam, make sure to pull the working yarn somewhat tightly. You don't want to pull so tightly that it bunches up, but you want to pull it tightly enough that the seam looks secure. Remove the stitch markers as you approach them. When you reach the end of the row, turn the work upside down and secure the yarn tails with a few good knots. By turning the work upside down, you'll be placing the yarn tail knots on the inside of the bag. This is an important step as you don't want the yarn tail knots showing on the outside of the bag. We just finished seaming the first two panels together. Next, join the third panel to the second with stitch markers. Use the same process as earlier to use the mattress stitch to seam the panels together. Again, when you reach the end, make sure to turn the work over and secure the yarn with a few good knots on the back of the piece. We just finished seaming the third panel. Next, we'll again use the mattress stitch to seam the fourth panel to the third. Turning the work over to secure the knots at the end. 
The last step is to seam the fifth panel to the bag. Use the mattress stitch to seam the panels together, turning over the work to secure the knot at the end. Our bag panels are now seamed together. Step five is seaming the bag. Place the work with the inside of the bag facing up. This back of the work will be the side that has the yarn change bumps and yarn tail knots because those are all things that we want on the inside of the bag, not on the outside. Fold the bottom half of the bag up to the top, then fold the sides in. This will be the shape of our bag. First, we'll seam the bottom right side of the bag, then we'll seam the bottom of the right square, and then the top of the right square. Then we'll work on the left side, seaming the bottom left side of the bag, followed by the bottom of the left square, followed by the top of that square. For these seams, you want to make sure you're using a yarn tail or length of yarn that's the same color as one of the squares you're seaming. When seaming these sides together, switch to threading through one stitch at a time. For the side where you're continuing to pick up interior bars, this is how I'm working through that stitch. For the side where you're working through the V-shaped stitches, here's how I'm working through that stitch. Alternate between these two stitches until you reach the next square. As you're working, if you ever find that the sides aren't seaming equally, you can play it by ear, and if you need to work through two stitches on the bottom side to catch up to the top, that's okay. When you reach the end of this square, we'll need to switch to a color that matches the next square, so if your current color doesn't match, secure the length with a knot on the inside of the bag. You can leave the tail out for now, because we'll come back soon to weave in all the tails. Cut a length of yarn in the same color as one of the next squares and thread it onto a darning needle. For the next row, we'll be working through V-shaped stitches on both sides of the pieces. This is how I'm working through the stitch on the top, and this is how I'm working through the stitch on the bottom side. For this side, work through one stitch at a time. For this seam, don't pull as tightly as when we were seaming the panels together. Keep a nice, even tension as you work. After you reach the corner, you can go back to the typical mattress stitch, threading through two interior bars on either side of the work, alternating between the two until the end of the row. When you reach the end, thread the yarn to the inside of the back and secure the tail with a few good knots. We just finished seaming the right side of the bag. Next, repeat the exact same process on the left side of the bag, seaming the bottom left edges, followed by the two sides of the left-hand square. I just finished seaming the bag together. Step six is securing the yarn tails with knots and weaving in the ends. At this point in the project, you'll have lots and lots of yarn tails that we need to clean up. Turn the bag inside out. I like to use a pair of scissors to cut all the tails together to create a shorter length before I begin working. Hiding the tails is really easy with knitting machine panels because the knitting is double layered, which means there's a center area of each square. Simply thread the yarn tail onto a darning needle, thread it into the center of the square, pull it through, cut the yarn tail close, and then wiggle the work until it's tucked into the center. Repeat this process with all the yarn tails. I just finished weaving in all the yarn tails and our bag is almost complete. Step seven is knitting the handles. For this project, I'm using a tulip I-cord knitting machine. However, you can create the handles in a variety of ways. If you prefer to hand knit the I-cord, please refer to my wristlet clutch video in which I share a tutorial on how to use double pointed knitting needles to knit the I-cord by hand. Or you could mix it up and use a crochet or braided handle. But for today's project, I'll show you how I made these with the tulip machine. Begin by threading your yarn through the loop on the left side of the machine and down through the middle until it's coming out of the bottom. Then attach the weight to the bottom of the yarn. As you knit, make sure you're holding the yarn with your left hand to provide tension and also make sure that you're holding the machine in the air with the weight pulling on the yarn. Make sure that all four hooks are open. First, we'll knit the setup row. Turn the knob until one hook captures the yarn. Turn the knob slowly for the next one. When you reach the second hook, use a crochet hook or your fingers to pull the yarn behind the second hook. Turn the knob again and let the third hook pick up the yarn. Then for the fourth needle, use the crochet hook or your finger again to move the yarn behind the last hook. After the setup row is done, you'll now let the hooks pick up every stitch. Go very, very slowly at first, making sure each stitch is captured and also making sure that the weight is still pulling down through the center yarn. After you get through about an inch of the I-cord, you can begin to pick up the speed, rotating the knob until the I-cord begins to come out of the bottom of the machine. For this project, I don't measure the length of the I-cord, I just knit until the work reaches the top of the machine when I bring it up. Once it hits about that length, cut a six to eight inch tail in the yarn, unloop it from the hooks, and turn the knob a few times until the work falls off the needles and you can pull the piece out from the machine. At this point, I'll lay the I-cord out to see if I like the approximate length of the handle. 
Next, repeat the exact same process one more time using the machine to create the second handle. For the second handle, I always try to make it a little bit longer than the first because you can always pull stitches out to make the eye cord smaller. Here I have my two eye cords fully knit and ready to bind off. You'll notice that they're different lengths and that's totally fine for now. Bring the first cord back to the bag and decide if you'd like to shorten the eye cord at all. For mine, I decided to take off about an inch from the length. To do this, pinch the eye cord where you want the length to end and gently pull the stitches out until you reach your fingers. Now that I have my desired length for the first eye cord, I need to shorten the second cord to match the first. Again, pinch the eye cord at the desired length and simply pull the yarn gently to pull the stitches out. Next, we need to bind off the eye cords. Each eye cord will have four open loops. Thread the yarn tail onto a darning needle and thread through all four open loops. Then as you pull the loops closed, secure the end with a knot. Repeat the same process on the end of the other handle. I just finished binding off both of my handles. Next, attach the handles to the bag. Thread one of the yarn tails onto the needle and thread through a few stitches on the top corner to ensure a secure attachment. Work this way a few times and then stitch around the edges through some individual stitches as well to make sure that the handles are attached really well. You want to make sure that this is a really secure attachment. When you're done, tie a couple of tight knots on an interior bar of the handle and weave in and trim the ends. When you go to attach the other side of the handle, try to untwist the eye cord as much as you can so that the handle isn't twisted. Repeat the process of stitching the handle to the corner on the remaining three ends of the handles. Our bag is almost complete. Step 8 is adding a knitting tag. This step is optional, but I like to add a knitting tag to all my work. You can add your tag wherever you prefer, but I like to place mine right in the middle. Our bag is complete. If you make this project, please tag me when you share your work at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, Etsy, and Ravelry. If you'd like to support the channel and download this entire pattern as a printable PDF to have on hand, as well as the template, please visit the link in the description below to purchase the pattern. If you'd like to check out all my knitting machine books, patterns, and templates, visit dianalevinenits.com. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I release my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see your work.